Out front tonight, Biden breaking his silence. The president finally speaking out tonight, addressing the classified documents found in his former office. Here he is just moments ago at a summit with other world leaders in Mexico. People know I take classified uh, documents and classified information seriously. When my lawyers were clearing out my office at the University of Pennsylvania, they set up an office for me, secure office in the Capitol, when I, the four years after being vice president, I was a professor at Penn. Uh, they found some documents in a box, you know, a locked cabinet, or at least a closet. And as soon as they did, they realized there were several classified documents in that box. And they did what they should have done. They immediately called the archives, immediately called the archives, turned them over to the archives, and I was briefed about this discovery and surprised to learn that there were any government records that were taken there to that office. But I don't know what's in the documents. I've, my lawyers have not suggested I ask what documents they were. I've turned over the boxes. They've turned over the boxes to the archives, and we're cooperating fully, cooperating fully with the review, and which I hope will be finished soon, and uh, there will be more detail uh, at that time. All right. Obviously, the emphasis here on fully cooperating, they've been fully transparent here. There are questions, though, that remain, including why were those documents in his former office, as he says he doesn't know, who had access to them? We don't know that. And why didn't the White House disclose this information when the documents were returned to the National Archives, right? That was back in November, and it happens to have been six days before the midterm elections. Okay, here's what we do right, know right now about them. According to a source, there were 10 classified documents, including U.S. intelligence memos and briefing materials found at Biden's former office in Washington. These documents included topics of Ukraine, Iran, and the United Kingdom. The dates were between 2013 and 2016, all of which, of course, were when Biden was vice president. They were found in three or four boxes that also contained unclassified papers, so it was sort of mixed together. The new GOP chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Mike Turner, sent a letter to the director of national intelligence today requesting an immediate review and damage assessment. And already, other Republicans are expressing outrage. Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice, they have to be held accountable if they don't treat Joe Biden exactly the same way they're treating President Trump. Okay, Evan Perez is out front in Washington. And Evan, what more are you learning tonight about these specific documents? Well, Aaron, the, uh, the, the initial process that the Justice Department was, uh, was undergoing, which is a review uh, conducted by the U.S. Attorney in, in Chicago, John Lausch, that part is concluded. The Attorney General has been briefed. Uh, senior leaders at the Justice Department have been briefed by Mr. Lausch. Uh, on the, the basic findings uh, that they have. And so now the decision rests with the Attorney General on what to do next. Uh, among those options, of course, uh, you heard uh, the calls there from Republicans that they want to see exactly what happened with Donald Trump happen here. And so one of those options could be for the Attorney, Attorney General to bring in a special counsel to do a, a, a full investigation, a, a full-blown investigation, which is not yet what this is. Um, you can bet that if that doesn't happen, you're going to hear a lot more from Republicans. And I think that's one of the things that the Justice Department and certainly the, the Attorney General is going to have to weigh uh, as they make a decision on this. Uh, as Jamie Gangel has reported, obviously, this is a much more limited uh, incident, right? We're talking right. about 10 documents. Uh, the, the cooperation, as described by the White House, is in stark contrast to what we saw in the Trump investigation, where you had uh, what the Justice Department says has been obstruction and, and an effort over months to refuse to turn over documents, including classified information. So there are differences between the two cases. That said, you know what's going to happen with the politics in this in the in this city and that's the reason why the attorney general is still weighing what to do next all right evan thank you very much and of course we you know we should point out when the national archives came to trump you know they asked for all these documents right they were given uh, some but not all right asked again asked again multiple subpoenas right had it all been handed over here go ahead look yourself so sorry uh, the Trump situation wouldn't even be a story, right? So it's very different. But uh, joining me now, Alyssa Farrah Griffin, former Trump White House uh, Director of Strategic Communications, Ryan Goodman, former Special Counsel of the Defense Department, the former Baltimore Mayor, Democrat Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, also an attorney, and John Avalon, our senior political analyst. So, John, let me start with you with what we just heard from President Biden. This is the first time we've heard from him about this. Uh, you know, what, what do you think, was it satisfying? <laughs> I, it, was, it was carefully written. 
I mean, you know, when he said, first of all, I'm, I was surprised to find out. That speaks to presumably intent. He didn't know the documents were right. there. There's no kind of cover up. Presumably, this was all some kind of accident. Uh, he also emphasized the fact that they cooperated immediately. That's an important distinction. Right. Um, but there are a lot of unanswered questions, one of which is why they didn't come forward first. I think Biden needs to, and the administration need to really embrace a sort of radical transparency about this in order to depoliticize it as much as possible. And we need to find out what the actual contents were. It's absolutely appropriate to follow the same principles you would, regardless of politics. It's also imperative that we do not let politics or people trying to play politics with this muddy the waters or, or end up playing right. the ref with regard to what's the right course of action. It should be across, above board and, and impartial. That's right. Now, Alyssa, to the point of what John's referencing here, of course, these documents were discovered back in November, about a week before the midterm elections. They called the National Archives, but they didn't disclose it. OK, and that does raise questions about the political timing. I mean, let's just call it like it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, this is this is a gift to the Trump camp. The people I'm hearing from who are still in Trump world are saying this basically makes our case for us. Um, they you know, he was standing by politics by not becoming transparent and coming right out with this. But also it speaks to the case that they have tried to make, which is prior presidents have mishandled classified information or in this case, a vice president. That said, the worst possible outcome for the country would be if we that the takeaway from this is we lower the penalty for mishandling classified information. It should be depoliticized to John's point. The facts need to play out. There's a lot of unknowns here and we mm -hmm. just need to see where this goes. The two cases are apples and oranges, but in a politically divided time, each side's going to hear what they want to. Right. It. And as you say, apples and oranges, and that's important to draw the distinction and the nuance. But to say that just because this may have been accidental and they cooperated, there's no nothing. Let's just move along here. Wouldn't be wouldn't be right either. Uh, Mayor Rawlings, Blake, you know, the, the attorney general obviously signed the U.S. attorney in Chicago to this holdover from the Trump administration, did so to be completely impartial. Right. Look who I'm putting in charge of it. So where do you think we are in that? All I can say is when I first saw the news, I mean, we had such a, the Democrats had just such a great week uh, with the debacle with Kevin McCarthy. So when I saw that news, I was like, oh, Uncle Joe, <laughs> I'm like, no, not with the, not with the papers. But, you know, listen, I was in office for over 20 years. When it was time for me to go, I didn't pack up those, my documents. So it is understandable that when he says he was surprised, he didn't know that they were in there. Merrick Garland's doing the best that he can to present to the American public an impartial assessment of what happened. And I can say that what we've seen is totally different than what we saw from Trump. There was no hiding in the dark in Mar-a-Lago. It was, look what we found, here it is. And not just these 10, but take everything and let us know if we miss anything. That's what we want to see from our elected officials. That's what responsibility looks like. So when you try to depoliticize this, Ryan, you look at it from the law, okay? Having classified documents is a problem, and, and that should be the same for anyone. Uh, but intent matters. So obviously, when you look at here, uh, when we talk about, right, um, they, they found them. They called the National Archives. Let's put, again, aside the lack of disclosure to the public a week before the midterms out of this conversation. Um, 300 documents of Trump's classified, uh, 60 top secret, right? Biden has 10 in all, uh, right? He, he called right away, as I said. Uh, he cooperated. Trump defied the National Archives. He defied subpoena one, subpoena two, ends up with an FBI search, right? The situations are completely different. From a legal perspective, what does that mean? So, like you say, intent is key. Uh, if... Trump willfully retained the information, which all the evidence seems to point to that over several months, and in fact, try to conceal it from the but government. He directed the employee after uh, there had been a search to move boxes. To so, move boxes you know, out yeah. of the storage facility, yeah. directed another lawyer to lie or make a false statement to the National Archives that there were no more documents uh, in his possession when there were. That's about intent. Did he have knowledge about the documents themselves? Did he intend to conceal them? That's the problem for him. For Biden, if it points, if it turns out to be true that he was surprised and that he had no knowledge of the documents, then it's kind of case closed. Of course, we'll see so how. So, from the a legal perspective, it'd be fair to do to do nothing. There'd be no penalty for that. That's right. So, it's, I I don't even just compare it like what's mm -hmm. the Biden situation to the Trump situation. It's what what's the Biden situation. Right. Just what's the Biden situation? So when the Absolutely. DOJ does prosecute these cases, they would not mm -hmm. prosecute a case like this if there's not the intent. For Trump, they would prosecute a case like that because it's egregious in terms of the, se the severity of his knowledge and his personal involvement in, in packing some of these boxes and concealing some of the other boxes. That's the kind of true comparison, I think, that the DOJ will actually go through as part of its analysis. Right. Now, again, John, then you hit the politics of it, right? And, and obviously, you know, we'd all like to say they don't matter. Of course, they do matter. And to that point, how important is it that 
that when they did find out, you know, they they uh, they probably viewed it as, look, this is an accident. Well, why should we disclose this and muddy the water mm -hmm. on the midterms? It's going to be used against us. They'd be right in that, but yet. They didn't say anything when they knew. Well, look, six days before an election is a high bar, but we're now two months after that fact. So what have they been doing in, in the previous two months? That's a legitimate question. Again, yep. incredibly important to determine what are the content of these memos and do they reflect positively or negatively on any interests for, for Biden in any way? Right. Um, but I think it, it, that's what makes it incredibly important to be radically transparent, to bend over backwards to be impartial, to follow the course of action like having a Trump holder U.S. attorney be uh, uh, review the documents. If indeed this was a, all a, a complete accident, and, and um, then a special counsel would come to that conclusion as well. But radical transparency, bending over backwards to show that this is being handled impartially, I think is key to creating credibility around it.